take a high-level look at the overview of the webinar. Talk about what is medical claims capture, the best requirements, challenges, using master rules to minimize risk, extend beyond claims, and we're going to go into a demonstration and some questions and answers. So why do we need to look at this? The biggest reason is saving time by automating data entry. You can see here from the chart that it takes a few minutes to process a single document by uh, multiplying multiplies by a few thousand, and you get into some significant amount of time. The more you organize, the more you automate, the higher the ROI. You can see here that, that you know, obviously there's paper-based process is not very efficient. When you introduce organization using ECM, uh, you start to increase your efficiency, but until you add data capture to the front end, you can't really realize your full potential with ROI. You may think most companies have this already covered, uh, but even the, the large payers can benefit from more automation. And if you look at this chart, uh, third-party administrators are, are down around 10%, but even if you get up to Blue Cross Blue Shield, you know, you're, they're not 100% as well. So, you know, there's still room room for improvement for everybody. So if you're looking at this as a solution, you're not you're not alone and um, you're in good company. I mean, let's take a look at the traditional manual process. You know, it may be different, uh, um, uh, but you can see very involved. It's involving uh, different rooms. You get the inventory. You first it comes in through the mail room. Uh, you inventory, you count the sheets, you put in separators, things like that, and maybe you it for uh, awaiting the examiner. You can see here, it's been around a lot. A lot of manual processes, um, data entry, anti adjudication system, microfilm, maybe, maybe not. I mean, uh, you know, that's sort of, you know, a little older. Um, and then compared to B, and then you destroy the paper. Uh, so a lot of manual jumping around with this process, um, and it's certainly very efficient. Manual processes are all also costly. Uh, the, the entry fees, the carrier fees if you have them, the storage, paper storage, all site uh, that's required by law, um, those are all expensive things. Let's take a look at the automated process for, for a minute here at a high level. Basically, the process is as follows. Locate the data on the claims and attachments. Extract that data. Validate it. And there's ways you can validate. There's many different ways you can validate it against uh, databases uh, where you would do call out to the database. You can do calculations within the application. You can cross compare with other things that you've pulled off of that um, form, that document. And you can export into HIPAA compliant format. Um, you know, ex also export it into your um, EM system, uh, whichever it may be. So, what are we talking about here? We're talking about our solution that we're talking about today is the IBM Data Cap Taskmaster. It's an enterprise capture platform. In 2011, the Association for Information and Image Management study. No product scored higher than IBM DataCap Taskmaster Capture, well above Cofax and ECM or EMC Captiva, and those are the big players here. So it's a well-respected product. DataCap gives you options for web-based clients, network clients. It's scalable. It'll grow you as you discover more ways to automate your paper processes. It has rich administrative tools, extensive reporting, a click interface that allows configuration of local devices at the client level. And one key point here is that, that it's user-based pricing. I mean, a, lot of, a lot of the subscription-based or, or, or computer competitors that DataCap are um, based on uh, click or based on document process. And, you know, you depending on the volume, you're not sure what your bill is going to be at the end of the month. Um, controlling this by user, it gives you much more control. Less, uh, much more predictability. Well, the, the process looks sort of like this. 
So you want to scan and port through via fax, email, EDI, network files, etc. You optimize the image to get it ready for reading. You read the data through appropriate processes, validate the information, verify, streamline, and deliver. The two processes that the users interface with mainly for the product are the scan. If you're using manual scan, if you're using email or fax, I mean those those just come in, um, and the connectors would hook into email. Um, it would read EDI files as they come in, uh, maybe attached to a fax server, or you can have that fax server dumped to a folder, and they have there waiting, polling, ready for anything to come in, uh, jumps on it, and then the process begins. Um, the next step in the phase where a user may be involved in is through uh, verify. And that's where they go in and correct anything that may have been blurry that came in an image and it didn't OCR correctly. Um, and those things can be done through Taskmaster Web. Those those two options. Um, there's also a step in in that's not shown here that can be done uh, either through a web interface or for through a thick client. And that is a a fix up process that you know if if the document a new document comes in that's never been seen before. Or, uh, you want to tell DataCap what to do with that, and it's a very simple process to do that. What about DataCap medical claims capture? We're mainly talking about the capture of CMS 1500 and UBO4 using web or the clients, as I described. The data validated using database loops, rules, math calculations, and then outputs uh, HIPAA compliant 837 ED fi EDI files and much more. And we're done. Automating your claims. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, through our discussions with customers and what we've helped them with, they move on to other areas of the business and, and automate other things. Uh, and we'll, I'll describe that scenario in a few minutes. Along with automation, you increase accuracy. The OCR process removes human error. Data cap deploys quickly to deliver faster ROI. Your data gets into your systems faster to give you better visibility. Allows you to quickly respond to customer inquiries because the data is there in your system already. It's not in transit. It allows you to easily spot data trends. And what we can provide this presentation. I'm kind of jumping through this a little fast, but we can provide this to you. Um, one thing that's done to improve the accuracy of the data capture is to do a red dropout. So these forms, uh, the medical forms come in either red or black and white, um, and, and Head will step through this process with you. Um, but basically, the red is dropped out, and all you're left with is the data. So when there's lines and things next to the data you want to capture, that all drops out. And it's easier for OCR, makes OCR more accurate um, because those things are dropped out that are around the text that you want to read, so there's no confusion. Forms will also come in as black and white forms, and again, those labels and, and lines and logos, things like that, are dropped out to reduce clutter to uh, increase the accuracy of the OCR. Um, and what Heather, you know, going to show as well is that. The data can knows how to handle that and knows what the form is. So, um, so to show you a pretty cool thing that it does. The tool does uh, once it drops out the, the logos and lines. No pressure though. Okay. <laughs> Taskmaster is efficient. It's, it's a fast automated process that allows for efficient data entry and correction using the verify stages, as Heather will demonstrate. Just to show you a, a screen, but this is really, you know, Heather's going to go into detail with the demonstration, but this is the screen. You can see there's a, a snippet in the upper right that shows a large area of what's being captured off of the form. Then there's the sub or smaller data snip, snippet that shows you what was captured in that area. And you see the, uh, if something is in low confidence down the bottom there, you'll see it as yellow meaning that it's not sure that that's a 9 on this example, and, and that will be shown in the demo as well. As far as it's concerned, the DataCap Taskmaster supports many of the leading devices, such as Kodak, Canon, Fujitsu, et cetera, 
as well as the multifunction devices, fax servers, email, network files on, on those drives that everybody has and H drives. Um, it will, you can point it to a folder and it will uh, ingest the documents that are inside of that folder. Data Task Master for Medical Claims exports, and I, I, I've said, reviewed this in the past, said HIPAA standard and, and also the new 5010 standard and is accepted by all adjudication systems. Outputs to repositories, uh, of course, the IBM FileNet Content Manager, P8, it uploads the C8, IS or Image Services, Production Imaging Edition, as well as FileNet Capture Professional. There's detailed reporting. This in here isn't too clear, but you know we can provide you with samples um, and show you more about reporting. Uh, just contact us. Um, but you can get report at a high level. You know, see how many batches are coming through. Uh, this is the batches, number of documents within them, when they arrived, how long they stayed in a queue, as well as the scan station or document level statistics. will show you. You know, at what station? You know, who's do, who's done? You know, 50 verifies today, and um, so you can really uh, track it nicely within your system. The performance of the system. Who's using Data Taskmaster for medical claims? You can see here we have a testimonial from an applications manager uh, at Blue Cross who likes the thin client functionality. They were they were mainly processing about 2,000 claims a day and able to reduce labor costs 50% using Taskmaster Capture. Manager at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona sees the value in adding more documents to the system to gain efficiencies beyond the 1500 and UBO4. By automating 12,000 claims a day to reduce labor costs 50%. They then ended to include contract enrollments, tests, invoices, et cetera, and now scanning 50,000 documents a day, including those from remote scan stations. That's where, you know, I think every customer we've talked to, uh, once they are done project that they set out to, uh, the department set out to automate, they take a look at, okay, what else am I having someone type in? What else is coming in that I would like to have in the system, but we didn't want to spend the money to have somebody type it in, but now we can automatically that in the system. The ideas really start flowing when you get when you, when you install data cap. The additional components you can utilize include runner enterprise to provide scalability, connectors for email, electronic documents, connectors for fax, connectors for documentum, SharePoint, Live Link, and recognition support for major European languages. We'll even capture multiple languages that are on a single document, so it'll it'll recognize, you know, if, if there's French and English on one one page, it'll it'll distinguish and, and take care of that for you. Uh, Cap Taskmaster also uh, has a configured pre-configured accounts payable capture, and I just wanted to mention that um, because it is built into the product and and can be rolled out as well. Um, and work alongside with the medical claims capture. Um, it's got a built, powerful built-in application for accounts payable. It's pre-configured for invoice data entry and PO matching, line item detail, validates line items, for the lookups like, like the medical claims calculations, also as well as the other uh, medical claims uh, uh, application will learn as new documents come in. Um, but for medical claims, we're talking about the standard documents. But if you have some other form in your business that you want to capture, um, it's very easy to add a new form and uh, and hey, to keep recognize that what's on that form. Okay, I, why why IBM medical claims capture? Um, it basically because it's the leading capture, claims capture technology. A dynamic template generation, you can see on the slide here, image processing and dual recognition. There's a, with recognition, it'll, it'll have two uh, engines, basically, that will OCR, text, and there's a voting process. And by 
multiple scan engines, you can increase your accuracy. It's prefigured to uh, the 1500 and the UBO4. It's also being readied for the new forms coming out. And is HIPAA client, as I mentioned, uh, open rule processing. It's easy, easy to add and modif modify the rules uh, per that pertain to your business. Um, and again, as I said before, uh, it's user-based pricing, which is very key. So at this point, I'll stop talking, and enough of me, and get to demo. Turn it over to Heather Rogers, and she'll show you DataCap, Taskmaster for Medical Claims. Thanks, Tom. Just give me a moment while I get my screen ready here. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm just going to um, go through and um, show you today how to process um, a couple of um, HICFAs, the CS 1500 and the um, a U a UBO4. I'm going to familiarize you with um, DataCap Taskmaster so you have a better idea of how easy it is to um, get information into your system. So without further ado, here we go. When these are first logs in, they will come into this screen. Um, you will see that it's divided into two windows, the operations window and the job monitor. Um, dependent on user access rights, um, the user will either see um, the scan or the um, verify icons as, as, they've been, as they've been granted access to so. And the job monitor displays batches that are, that are in, in the process. Um, depending on, again, user rights, depends whether they will a be able to see this um, this window or whether, you know, a, an administrator or a super user will see this window. In most business environments, medical forms are scanned in um, task master clients using a scanner. But for the purpose of um, our demonstration today, I'm going to use, use the virtual scan. Um, so this means that we can scan in medical forms from any electronic um, device, as Tom was saying earlier, from thick or thin clients. So I've scanned in some batches here, and you can see that um, the job monitor, that I have one on hold, and then I have three pending verify. The back hold means that Somewhere along the line in the verification process, um, the user has decided that there's an, um, an issue with one of the forms, so she's put a batch on hold to, um, to check into it further. You're able to um, filter this, cause, um, this screen by using the filter button up here. You can you look for um, any particular batch by job, whether it's a uh, Institutional, which is a um, UB forms, or professional, which is a CMS 1500. Or you can filter by users to see how, how many um, batches a user has been, config, um, been assessing. Or you can filter by um, whether how many how many jobs are actually on hold, or whether they've been finished or completed. So this is the job monitor filter is um, a pretty important tool. You also sort by clicking on the um, the settings as well if you wanted to see certain jobs because sometimes, especially when you're in, in production, there can be a lot of batches flowing through this job monitor. So using the filter and sorting is is makes makes administrators' lives a lot more easier. Okay. So move on and I'm going to um, show you how to process a batch and um, we're going to take a look at the first screen and this one is I'm going to blacken the black and white professional version so this is a 1500 so to access the batch I'm just going to double click on it here and this is how a user will first see the screen. Now, in normal 
business circumstances I that most of you will be working with your monitors but for this purpose obviously I'm, I'm having to show you you're all on all on one screen, but you can see that it's still quite clear. So, you know, it's it's better for, for in for processing if you've got dual monitors, but you don't need to have them. So part of the screen here is the actual scanned in image of the um of the CM fifteen hundred. Now you may recollect that I just said that we were going to process a black and white form. And what DataCap does is that when it's scanned in, it goes through uh, various steps. It obviously takes off the um, takes off all the unnecessary lines, um, despeckles it, and and actually deskews it, which straightens up any um, with invoices to make sure that they're optical form, should I say, to make sure that they can be OCR correctly. Which you know you you don't want to be um, OCR in lines in and then be mistaken for ones. So um, that's what we do. But what we also do is once it comes into the verifier, we put the overlay back on, so it really helps the user to be able to navigate through the form. That this is something more familiar to them than looking at the um, data that's all been dropped out. Um, this part, this part of the screen is the actual data entry or the indexing part of the screen, and this is fully customizable. Um, we data cap captures every single um, field on the CMS 1500 and on the UB, um, but it's not necessarily um, what you need to have. You can we can actually hide the forms that you you don't require, the the, the, the fields that you don't require, so that the user doesn't have to go to every single field if that's not what you need. So that's that's good about that. Um, a each field is a data snippet. We'll, when you when you click on the actual field, you'll see that the um, the data snippet is above the field, and it gives the user ease of navigation as well. They be able to see what the field says, and it also highlights the area on the form. It makes it very easy. Um, we also provide. We, we also can validate certain fields, such as dates. So if a date comes in in the incorrect format, it will be highlighted to the user, so for that to, so that the right information gets sent through to the adjudicator, to the adjudicator, so the adjudicator doesn't have to worry about fixing these things. We also um, can. To enhance your validation, we can also um, provide lookups to your member database so that the member details are correct. We can also um, provide lookups to diagnosis code database to make sure that any diagnosis codes on the lines are correct so that you're not coding anything against an incorrect diagnosis code. So that information is passed to the claims examiner you know, correctly so they don't have to worry about that. Some 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 businesses would like all this um, information to be validated up front, and other businesses like like it to be passed through to their their own adjudication system. But the option is there. So you may have noticed on this screen that some of the fields are in blue, and some of the fields are in red. Okay, fields that are in blue means that they've been read with 100% accuracy. So there's no need for the um, user to pay any attention to these fields. If the field is in pink, it means that there's error, like I said before. Taskmaster may not have been able to have read the information. A preset validation has failed. For example, like this is a date. All right. Date cap, um, we also calculate lines in the line detail area. And if a field has an incorrect value, the fields will be highlighted in pink until the issue is resolved. There is also a um, another color, which is yellow, which was probably see on another form in a moment. That um, that just means that the ink, the the data is of low confidence. It may not necessarily be incorrect. It just may need to be looked at. One of the other benefits of data cap is the 
when you go into the form, it highlights the first field that's incorrect, so the user doesn't have to go scanning across the whole form to find an incorrect field. It will take you straight to the first field that's incorrect to be corrected. So here we can see that this is just an incorrect date, so I'm just going to just change that and just make it the correct date, because validation for this field is the date needs to be a um, four-letter year. To move a, a, along the, the actual form itself, I can use a hotkey, Alt and L, and it will take me directly to the next area where there's information that needs to be corrected. So, as you can see, it's taken me again to this a date field that it's read incorrectly, but that looks to be okay. So, I'm just going to move along and the procedure looks okay. As you can see, as I'm moving to the fields, it's highlighting the area on the form. This helps the user again. I can see that this is incorrect, so I'm just going to just change that. And now I've moved to the next area that needs correcting. And now this is a, a yellow field, so this isn't a validation field. It's just an area of low confidence. Now, um, is correct for this field, so I don't have to correct it. I can just press tab, and it's just cleared it automatically for me. And if I press Alt L, it's moved through every single field on the page and checked it. It will tell me that the end of the page has been reached, and then I can just say yes if I want to validate it. And providing that everything has has worked, then it will just move on to the next form. And again, I've come to the next form. And it's going through to the first item on the line that needs to be corrected. Now, it doesn't like this so much, so I'm just going to just see why. I'm going to just move through that and then just move to the next line. There's nothing, no problems on this form. I'm just going to say yes. I moved on to the next form automatically. So you can see that I'm on line item number two or three on the next form. Now the problem with this is that it's actually spread in. Like it hasn't that was actually OCR'd in. The number two was OCR'd in. So I'm just going to get rid of this here, the number two, and correct the date here. And then it's taken me down to line number three, line number three, and I'm just going to get rid of the three. And it hasn't read the date very well here. And the end of the page has been reached, and it will just say. I've completed everything in the batch. There's been no more problems found, and it's asked, it's just prompting me to finish the batch. So that was that. How easy it was to move through uh, 1500 with on the with the black and white. Can move on to the. Uh, I'll show you what the red 1500 looks like. And I'm executing the batch again. Now you can see it's the same. It had the overlay on there for us so we can have a look through the, look through the form. Here the date is incorrect again. And this is confidence field. I don't need to make any corrections to this. I'm just going to tab through it and then alter now. And that's the end of this page. So you can see that once um, the user becomes familiar with being able to use the hotkeys and you know the, and you know the data that is required for the form, it doesn't take very long at all. It's very, very easy. And you can see the control of the validation rules, what that gives to um, the business to be able to control the, the validity of the data. So that the, the right information is passed to the um, to the examiners, which is important. So if I just press Alt and L again, this has gone through. 
This is an example of a validation field that I just want to bring your attention to. You can see that here, the, you can see that the date is actually configured correctly. It's um, 08 and it's 12 um, 01-2006. But if I was to validate this now, it would still throw me an error. It's given validation fail. And the reason for that is because it knows that the date is incorrect because the first date of service was um, was fourth, was in April, and it can't have a, the two to the to the January. That's what the problem is. So the dates of service have got to be correct. So that's why that. So that's that's a good catch. I like that. So if I type that in correctly and I validate it again, you can see that the validation has passed. So I'll just check here. So I'm moving through the form again. There's no more problems on this batch. So I can complete this. So now I've seen the, um, the red, red and white and the black and white 1500s. So I'd just like to just you what the UB looks like, the um, institutional, and I just, this is red institutional claim. You can see it's the same in the format, but as you know, these have so much more information on it, so this, this, this form here has got an awful lot of information on it as well, but Again, because of the ease of being able to um, validate the, and verify the data, moving through this form is no different to um, the other forms. You just, the user just can use the hotkeys all now to move, move through to find the areas that are incorrect and then verify them and move them on to the system. One thing I wanted to show you down here is as, a, as an example, is that this um, has a, this UB has actually got four lines on it. And you can see you can move through the lines. If you look here, I can move up and down the lines here. And the calculation, this is the total charge of the invoice well, of the medical form. If I was, if there was an incorrect piece of data in here. You see that the validation has failed because the, now the the number of lines, the amount of the number of the lines do not add up to the total charge of the medical claim form. So if I was to try and move forward now, it won't let me move forward until that has been corrected. So that this is this just gives you an example of some of the well of the validation that we can perform in DataCap to make sure that to ensure the accuracy of your data before moving it on to a claims examiner. Now if I was just to change that back to the correct amount, you can see that it's validated and we can move on. Now there was a problem with this and I was unable to resolve this um, this year. I would just simply put the batch on hold by clicking up here and clicking OK because it's telling us the batch is not complete. And then when I move back to the move to the job monitor, you can see that my institutional red is now on hold. And that will remain in the same place until I come back to it with a with, with my answer and be able to move on. And the nice thing about this is that you can, it would bring you back to exactly the same place where I left off, so there's no, there'll be no confusion. So now, you, now I've shown you how to um, navigate the data, navigate the, um, in, navigate the batch, and be able to process a 1500 and a UB in both red and white and black and white. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. This this now concludes my demonstration. Thank you.
Thank you. 